let's talk about Node Red and uh, how we can use Node Red with um, different media server software. I'm going to use Touch Designer because, as usual, I'm mainly working in Touch. So, let's start off by uh, how you run Node Red. So, if we open up a command prompt window, so I've installed Node Red. You have to install Node first, um, but if you can follow the instructions on the website, it's fairly straightforward. And then once it's all up and running, I can type Node Red, and it will start up the Node Red server. So it says there, started flows. And now I can go into Chrome, and I can navigate to 127.0.0.1 .0 .0 on port 1880, and that's going to load up the Node Red interface. So Node Red is quite good for creating control panels, doing system monitoring, um, just translating data from one format to another. So um, to give an example, I'll start off um, just by showing how we can get some data. So if I uh, bring a UDP, um, this is a UDP in, so this is the input and this is output. So it says there, input, output. So I can say UDP and I can debug that. Um, and then I can just link those two together. This little button here is the um, basically turns the debug on and off, so we can we can trigger that. I haven't deployed yet, so we won't see that until we deploy. So on the UDP in, I can say, okay, you know what? On port eight thousand, let's listen for UDP messages, and we want to output something, and we can hit done. We're outputting a buffer. I can then click this deploy button and now we're listening on UDP 8000 and then we're going to print out whatever comes in. So now we need to send some data. So if I go into Touch Designer, I can create a UDP out stat and I can send some data at it by typing in some text. So I can say op UDP out one dot send hello. And that's just going to send hello. I don't think it's going to do any line endings on port 8000. And this will then run. And in Node Red, we should see in our debug that we get this message payload as a buffer. And there's all the information coming in. If we wanted to, we can double click to change from a buffer to a string. And then we can deploy again. And now when I run the same script, we get hello. So we can straight away, we can start to send data into um, Node Red, and we can see that the message payload um, is sent out. So let's start looking at some of the more exciting features. So I'm just going to delete out my UDP. I'm going to clear off my log by hitting the delete button here in the debug section. And then I'm just going to go into this top right menu and I'm going to hit Manage Palette. What's great about Node Red is there's a lot of extra plugins that are um, built in. And one of the really fun ones is um, the dashboard. So if we load in Node Red dashboard, we can install that by clicking and hit Install. And now that should install all of the, pa all of the um, different nodes that we want for the dashboard. So we can scroll down here and we can see at the very, very bottom we have all these new dashboard uh, nodes that we can use. So they're, they're quite fun. So to set up our dashboard, we can start off by um, going to um, the, uh, I think it's in settings, sorry, wrong button. We can go into the dashboard, here we go, sorry, it's this one here. It's the dashboard button on the right. We can go in there and then we can create layouts and sites. So I can say my site is just going to be control. Um, we can show the title bar, we can have dates and so on, different widgets, and I can set a theme, I'll set dark. And I can set the base color to something like white. Um, and you can choose fonts and so on for, so you can kind of theme it a little bit through here. Uh, and then we can add layouts. Uh, so we can add a new tab and we'll call this tab uh, home oh, if I can type so we call that home and then we'll just deploy so now when we go to 127.0.0.1 
1800 forward slash UI, we get this control. It says, please add some UI nodes to your flow to redeploy. So this is where our control panel will live. So I'll start by just adding a form. And a form is fairly straightforward. You can double click. We need a UI group in order to make that work. So we'll make a new default group on home and we'll add that in. So I can type in two different labels and so on. So the label, I'm just going to call this um, my details. Type in my name. So one of them is going to be my name. And then we can add another element. And this one can be my email address. Uh, email. But lowercase because touch designer conventions. And we can say that this is an email address. So we can say, and we can say it's required. So you can't submit this form until you've typed those in. So now we can hit done. And we've got this new My Details form. I can deploy. And when we go to control, here we have a form with My Details. And I set the text color to something horrible. So let me just fix that by going into the dashboard and just change that color back to something sensible, maybe gray. Um, deploy. Every time you do something, you have to hit deploy. Oh, there we go, that's better. So then I'm on the home tab uh, and I have my details. I can type in Richard, my email, richardburns at gmail.com and I can hit submit and it will submit those details. At the moment, those details don't go anywhere because we're not capturing them. What's great about Node-RED is we can debug pretty much anything that's coming out of a, um, a node. So if we drag this node to a, a debug and just make sure that debug's enabled and I can hit deploy. So now when I type in my details, I can type in Richard, Richard Burns at gmail.com. I can hit submit and that will come in here. So I have an object and in that object I have Richard and my email is richardburns at gmail.com. So that's a JSON object and in order to access the JSON object you don't necessarily need to know how to code. You can actually just copy. So let's say I want to send the email address to Touch Designer. What I can do is I can hover over this debug and I can click here, I think this one, the left one, and it'll say path copied. And then what I can do is I can use a function called change. I think split might work as well, but change is what I generally use. And then I can just drag from my details. I can branch off to the change node and I can double click and set a message payload, which is the output of the node. And I'm going to set that to an expression. And the expression I'm going to set it to is whatever I paste in, which is payload.email. And that was set here. So if I hit done, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to debug that and deploy. And now when I type in my email address, I'm just going to type something random. Uh, my name's Richard or whatever. Now I get just the email address. So what I've done there is I've basically said, take the JSON package from here, debug it out so I can, I can copy it, paste it into the change uh, node. When I double click, change, paste it into there as an expression. And then that will just allow us to send that information straight to the debug. Now, if we're using Touch Designer, then we might want to send UDP. And we can say, okay, let's send that over UDP on port, maybe port 7000, and we'll say uh, 127.0.0.1, and hit done. So now that's going to send out through UDP. We can then come over to Touch Designer. We can make a new UDP in. Oh, if I can actually lay down the right one. And on port 7000, we're listening on port 7000 by default. So now we can go in and we can type in some details. I can type in rich at rich.com and I hit submit. And nothing comes in because I am set to roll call at one per line. It should be one per message. 
So what I can do is I can flush that out just quickly. Oh, yeah. There you go, it's a rich dot rich. So if I just type it in now, it will work. So rich at rich.com. Oh, and it wants my name because that's a required field. And there we go, rich at rich.com comes in. So that's quite cool. So we can actually send information from a web browser. I mean, you can run this on a tablet. You can obviously full screen it uh, on a tablet or something and lock it down. So we can send information straight to Touch Designer. That's really good fun. Another thing that Node-RED is really good for, um, it's good for communicating with uh, Internet of Things devices, like the Raspberry Pi, for example. Uh, there's a PJ Link uh, module for connecting to projectors. Uh, OSC, if you need OSC, there's actually an OSC. If you go to Manage Palette, there is a, and go to Install, there is actually an OSC um, library here, which, will let, which if I just install, just to show, will create a whole bunch of, it's an OSC node, which you use with the UDP. So we can pass OSC from a UDP in using that. And in fact, let's do that because we're going to show something uh, something else with the UI in a minute. So you can do all that stuff, but also you can use it for monitoring. So let's say, for example, we want to monitor our touch designer um, frame rate. Well, we can do that by creating a perform chop. And when we create a perform chop, we get the frame rate. And let's say we want to send that out through OSC. So let's create an OSC out chop. And we can send it to localhost port 10,000, which is good because we're not using that. And then we can bring that in. So in the UDP here, Touch Designer sends OSC on UDP. I think most protocols, most OSC implementations, I think if not all of them are on UDP. So we can set port 10,000 and we can say what we want to output. I'm going to say output a buffer because Touch Designer's chops send buffers of other information like sample rate and then we can say listen for a path and now the path that touch designer will send out will be fps and it will be forward slash fps because that's the name of the channel so we can hit done that's all very good and then let's debug out and see what touch designer sends in so we deploy and here we go we're getting a whole load of information down this right hand side uh, if I want to stop it, I can hit this button and that will now stop this bundle. And I can open up the object and see what Touch Design is sending. So Touch Design is sending us the address, sample rate, great. And it's sending us the frames per second and the argument is 60. So let's say we just want to get this value 60. We can copy it and then we can use our change as we did before. And we can change the OSC value by setting the payload to be an expression. And the expression is the payload's first argument, well, first object, and the arguments from that. So that's good. So that's going to give us um, 60, hopefully. So if we just debug that out now and delete and deploy, it's going to delete the queue. Uh, I need to turn on. And hit deploy there you can see it's 60 it's, it's sending the frame rate into uh, this um, this debug so let's delete well not delete the debug let's let's make something else so let's create in our UI a gauge and this gauge is going to show um, our our 60 frames per second so we can create a gauge we can say it's on the home page um, it's a label, it's going to be, let's call it a frame, a touch designer, frame rate. It's got a value, it's got units, and we can say, okay, well, let's say 0 to 60, because at the fastest we're going to be at 60. And we can hit done, we can deploy it, we can go into control, and here we go, we have a touch designer frame rate gauge that now tells us how fast touch designer is running at. And we can use a hog chop to kind of simulate nasty delays. And we'll see our frame rate drops. So we know from our web page how Touch Designer is doing in another room. So if we wanted to, we could have a Touch Designer install that's not internet connected, but is on a local network. 
and then we can send that information from the install back to this web page and this web page we can log into via some remote software like TeamViewer and we can then see exactly what's going on. We could also, if we're on a static IP, we could even host um, broadcast out this page and have it so that you can access remotely just from your browser. Security wise I would never recommend that but you can do it. So now we can actually bring all that information straight out of touch back to here and we have two-way connection between Node-RED and Touch Designer. So that's pretty much all I really wanted to show for now just to kind of give a bit of a taster as to how you can build panels quite quickly and easily and how nicely you can build your monitoring systems as well. So uh, that's all for now and if anyone has any questions let me know and if there's anything that you'd like me to go over in a future tutorial with Node-RED I can go through uh, a specific topic. One of the main things that's quite cool is interacting with Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and so on. That's something that's pretty cool and I might go over. Also you have these email and social sections as well. So there's a lot of really cool things you can do. Uh, so I recommend trying it out and seeing how it goes.